Hey guys, thanks for tuning into Border City Rock Talk. We get great news, great interviews, great interviews with sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, the black and yellow guitar icon thingy to your right. Hit the like button and the notification bell as well. Please leave comments so I know what you think of the interviews. Uh, before I further ado, I bring to you Miss Gabriella Gunsakova or Gabby Gun. How are you doing today, Gabby? I am doing great. How are you? <laughs> I tell everybody I'm a million dollars shy of being a millionaire, but that's not true. Let's be honest. I'm about a million and about 25,000 uh, shy of that million. So I'm doing okay, though. Good, 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 good. That's better than bad. Yes. So thanks for uh, taking the time out of your busy schedule to be on my show. And I don't think my friends and subscribers are going to believe how this happened, this interview. Usually I get publicists that I've worked with contacting me. Or I'll reach out to the talent myself personally. In this case, it was indirect. You had reached out to me in an indirect way through an Instagram post, correct? I liked some of your uh, yeah video. I think it was. Uh, there were like you have musicians on, then you have a little bit of like conspiracy theory stuff. You yeah, know? it was a Richard Surrett. So for the viewers, it was a Richard Surrett um, Instagram post. And I see this Gabriella Gun or Gabriella Gun official uh, click like, and it's like all curious people were like, "Okay, who is this person? Who is this person?" And then I looked, and I'm like, "Oh my God, it's not a spam. It's not a bot. She's got like hundreds of thousands of followers. She follows a decent amount of people to know that she's actually a real person, and she posts videos." So what do I do? I start looking at your videos. And then what do I do? I almost, my knees almost buckled when I started listening to your voice singing. I do wow. some investigation on YouTube. And I literally thought, I got to get a hold of this talent because you're in the same genre. Well, musically, you sing in the same genre as I grew up with. Def Leppard, Iron Maiden, um, Skid Row, Van Halen, Def Leppard. So briefly, after I just rambled there, Tell the viewers a bit about yourself, uh, Gabby. A bit about myself. Well, I consider myself a singer, for sure, and musician. <laughs> <laughs> I started very early on. Um, I started, actually, and as you said, I was born in 1993, but I still grew up with the same influences as you did because my dad was a guitar player in Iron Maiden Tribute Band. So I, since I was four years old, I would grow up uh being basically in the guitar case um amongst musicians of course on the amateur level my dad was never professional musician uh but uh that's what we would we have at home like when i was growing up we would be surrounded not there would never be tv really playing in our house it would be mainly uh, albums you know of, of classical rock 70s 80s um and in the car all the time that's what i was listening to so uh, not so much heavy metal because my mom is um you know she's not a fan necessarily of heavy metal but she could get get like all the rock like 80s ballads she loved yeah. that so i discovered metal or like harder music a little early on a little later in my teenage years but that's how i grew up like that you know, those influences. And then I, I never forget the reason why I became a singer and why I became so intrigued with um, rock and metal, especially, uh, was um, I remember I was like 12 years old and I saw Iron Maiden Rock in Rio 2001. Wow. And it changed my life. Like I saw that DVD and I was just hypnotized by Dickinson and like what he was doing with the audience. And to me, it was like a music from a different planet, from different world. And I remember back then I was just like, well, wow, this is what I, I would love to do. You know, I would love mm -hmm. to become a singer. Right. And so I started my first band when I was 13 years old. It was actually with my teacher, um, guitar teacher, because I played classical guitar for eight oh, years. I didn't know that. Yeah, my dad was like, when I was nine years old, he's just piano or guitar. I'm like, I don't want to play anything. <laughs> yeah. He's like, piano or guitar. I'm like, I don't want to play anything. He's just like, you choose or I choose for you. You know, it's like straight putting me, you know, into, and I'm just so grateful for that. Because like I started, I was very busy as a kid. I didn't have time to get into trouble. I was just too busy with sports and then too busy, busy with, busy with uh, music. 
And so I started first band. It was a White Snake tribute band. Oh, wow. I had, yes. It was with my guitar teacher, with um, drummer teacher, and then a couple of students. It was like a teacher's students band. And we played stuff from White Snake a ton. Everything. Um uh, sailing uh ships wow. we played for your loving give me all your uh, love tonight we played judgment day like all of that but i was like 13 year old that just like was behind the mic like really determined that i'm gonna make it sound right so dickinson coverdale you know ronnie james dio um all of these guys were like a big influence for me since wow. i was a kid wow so um, a bit about your background with the Ken Tamplin Institute uh, Academy, um, as well as uh, TSO. Tell everybody, I know a lot of the viewers are going to know who you are, but the ones that come here for rock and roll and hard rock, they're going to be blown away. Um, just a bit about what you do with Ken Tam Tamplin Academy. Uh, you're not a student anymore, obviously. Or you know, I mean, it's, it's okay to be student, you know, although we are not like a properly student, Gosh, I love study. I love to learn stuff. So I am like a life student. That's what I am. And anyone who comes and wants to share his knowledge, Ken is one of my best friends. We know each other for over 10 years. This guy did so much for me. I would not be in trans Cyber and Orchestra if he wouldn't record these videos 10 years ago with me that he would put on internet. And that's how they found me. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, he... Um, as I said, I, I said it before, I'm very humble to say that I learned so much from him. I was talented, absolutely. Did I did I I have talent from God that I don't take for granted? There always been a range, there always been I was always naturally gifted to sing. Yeah. But until who he would introduce me and basically his 30 years of knowledge right. that he got from him studying whole life and studying under one of the best teachers in the world mm -hmm. me to a whole new level, honestly. So, you know, I, um, we are best friends. We work together and I don't mind to say that I still learn. I'm still learning, you know, after 10 years, there's still so much to learn. Voice is an instrument. It's a yeah. beautiful instrument. And I have the approach of instrumentalist. I want to understand the instrument that I'm using and what am I doing? So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't mind to be, I don't mind to say that, that he's a, you know, great vocal teacher. Well, no, he is. I mean, I've looked at, uh, I think I've, uh, well, I've obviously known of Ken for a couple of years now, just different videos. I've watched him having some of his students there. Um, with TSO, I've, uh, chatted with some of your colleagues, Joel Hoekstra is one of them, Mark Hudson, uh, years ago, um, Jeff Scott Soto, Dino, what's that been like? I remember, to be honest with you, about five years ago, the TSO would do five or six shows, like sort of near where I am. I'm in Ontario, Canada, but not too far away in Detroit, Auburn Hills, there's like five shows. And I'm like, what is this all about? I didn't really look into it. And God, when I did, such an amazing thing. So tell people about TSO that don't know what it's like. And um, just a bit about um, just your great experiences with the show. And, and I mean, I, Trans Over and Orchestra is like, I don't know if you can find like any more talent than, than in Trans Over and Orchestra. It's like right. whoever is in TSO is incredible, uh, talented musician. It's It's yeah. just incredible what like Joel, you know, he's just beyond the singers you know jeff scott soto incredible voice dino jalusic it's like beyond incredible um talented singer um it, it is like a show of course that is it's a christmas show yes yes it's it's a christmas classic show with lasers and screens and it's like a rammstein you know Christmas classical show. Mm -hmm. That's what it would be like. You, they have ramps, like so. In, people are incredibly entertained. You know their eyes. It's it's a great show. And then the the scale of the talent of all the singers and and what they can do. You know from from the pop songs to the rock songs, it's unique. 
you know yeah. it, it really is a very unique show and I, you know it's, it's been always pleasure to be part of it it's been always pleasure to to tour with them i mean it's it's a, it's a tour on a professional level you mm -hmm. are in the tour bus you know that is the same that metallica is using or you know iron maiden or all the big bands they are pretty much the only band that plays uh arenas twice a day i was twice just about day. go ahead they sell it twice yeah. a day you have 3 p.m show and then you have 7 p.m show who does that? You know, that's like if you have 15,000 people in the arena, you play 30,000 a day. Yeah. So the reason it, I was going to bring that up was because I think I was chatting with Joel via Facebook or something and asked him for, uh, I, I'd asked him a question. He says, um, just, I'll let you know next week, Ernest, because um, I've got two shows tomorrow, two shows the next day. And that's when I first realized, shit, two shows a day. So coming back to you and you're singing, prowess i'm wondering okay and if i ask somebody that's not paying attention a question like this they're going to be like what are you talking about i can guarantee you that when you sing a set or even one song with the level that you sing i think you're up to what three and a half octaves you're going for four ken says uh like as, as him because i'm like what the fuck do I know? <laughs> but yeah, yeah. He, says four, he says that it should be four octaves, you know, because I have, I'm something that's called contralto. I have the range of al alto, but I also can switch into soprano, which is, as you know, it's, it's, it gives you so much range. You can go and do a lot of stuff. And wow. it, it, there could be, if I would try, I could even try to attempt some of the whistle tones. Wow. So you're, so, like, a, you're like a shapeshifter now. Uh, I, you know, a little bit. I love it. I really, really love it. Like, I just yeah. love to play with different colors, different sounds, yeah. different. I don't want to be one dimensional. I want to be like, really, come on, you know, like do a little bit of soul, do a little bit of a jazz here, do a little bit of um, riffing, you know, like yeah. shred your voice a little bit. Like, there I go. love that. I really, really love that. And I just love like, when someone pushes me out of my comfort zone, I will be bitching about it. I'll be like, I cannot do this. You know, I, I'm not a pop singer. I cannot sing soul like, you know, black people. And then if you mm -hmm. push me a little bit, you know, I, I cross that like out of like that discomfort mm -hmm. and, and I will attempt it and I will try it over and over again until it's good. And that's, you know, that's how you learn. So I don't want to be just... Oh, if she can sing just rock and, and metal, I would love to. Like, sometimes I sing Celine Dion. Like, Canadian. during my warm up, warm ups, I, I'll try, like, I'll do, I'll do warm up, you know, like, like, uh, scales that I do a little like a guitar player, player, mm -hmm. basically. That's how I warm up my voice. And then, um, how long I, does the scale take? What's a short scale for you? 20 uh, seconds? you mean uh time wise like how long it takes yeah, the warm yeah. i could do 45 minutes war warm up I, and i would do it before every show what's a short scale you could do could you do a short scale for us right now uh um uh, i don't know it'd be like uh, you know like just okay. up and down up and down up and down it's very boring it's you know boring. it's nothing, nothing crazy <laughs> like my friends always just they hate it they're just shut up you know please do the warm-ups when we're not in when we're not around, um, but uh, you go like up and down, and then just you know, you're just climbing the scales, literally yeah. like like guitar. And then right. I start to warm up my voice with you know before I go into a grit or anything a little raspy. I do the clean voice. Mm. So I, I totally I try to I, I can sing Christina Aguilera. I can sing Celine Dion. Probably not as great as they do, but uh, I'll, I'll I'll try that. You know I'll do that and mm. just and then. Uh, then I can add a little bit to the grid, you know, and just mm -hmm. start to build. And I switch to Lane Staley and, you know, try to yeah. do a little bit of Alice in Chains or Soundgarden. And, oh, man. Yeah. Um, and then, then, then that, that gives you, you know, range of, and catalog of, of just playing with colors. And, and um, I, I love that. I, I really love that. Perfect. Um, this question is leading me to, um, weight loss and this is how we're going to do it <laughs> okay today i saw on your instagram 
you posted you got some big news coming. Um, you can't tell us anything about that, right? It's it's rock and metal related. It's actually okay. you know it's it's I think it's really exciting, uh, but not yet. <laughs> okay, so I'm wondering about uh, somebody asked if you were pregnant, and I thought, hmm. So I'm going to ask you, are you pregnant? I am not pregnant. I am absolutely 100% sure not pregnant. <laughs> okay. Well, this is great. So then you don't have to worry about weight loss. And here's how my weight loss segue is coming in. When I see you sing a three or four minute song, and I started my preamble to that little thing earlier. When I see you sing a three or four minute song, I realize um, that there's a lot of energy and calories that you're burning. So if you're singing, let's say a uh ba -ba -ba -ba, wasted time by skid row sebastian bach oh, let's shit, say you yeah. sing that song through maybe you do it twice to get the right take strenuous physically it must be and do you lose weight you actually i mean absolutely especially if you're on a stage and there's like lights on you yeah it's like you sweat like crazy it's easier yeah. for the guys or the handsome guys that so <laughs> like a sweat over them and they look sexy. Like for us, we're, we melt literally like our, our face melts, you know, yeah. girl, it's not as pretty. Um, but even yet yeah, on like practices, hell yeah. I, I mean, being a rock and metal singer that takes stamina, huge. And good thing is that if I use my diaphragm correctly, which you have to in order to, you know, create that sound. And so it, it's not everything just from a throat or chest, which, you know, over time that damages your vocal cords. Mm -hmm. Diaphragm is your engine, which is the stomach area. So oh. you kind of, you're kind of constantly pushing and pushing and pushing and you, you're, you know, work with the air. If I train like you know, my vocals or my vocal cords or do my warm ups like every other day. Over time, I get a six pack for free. So you do lose weight. You absolutely do lose weight. And you're, if you do it right, you could have your six pack. Yeah. Okay. Well, here's the thing. All right. I want to challenge you. I've been watching your videos, Gabby, and I'll tell you this. I tried singing like you, didn't lose weight. And then I did with this other thing. I thought, well, here's the key. You put your hand up like this when you're singing. I thought that must be it. I've gained weight now. Yeah, I mean, it's a little secret. It's a little secret that I cannot, uh, you know, I cannot talk about it. It's you're all about I'm, secrets. I'm sorry. Though. It was probably the thing, like the finger movement, that did that. Oh, I'm gonna keep looking. Actually, I, I, I can, <laughs> I can go. And, I can slow down the uh, the speed of the YouTube video. So, anyways, I've got to ask you a question about. Um, Am I able to bring up this topic about a person with the last name Cruz? Uh, I don't know. What is it about him? <laughs> okay. I met I, him like, literally, I met him like once in my life. That's the question life. I'm asking. So yeah. how did that happen? If you don't mind talking about it, I saw that picture and I couldn't find any more pictures. It was uh, a charity. It was literally, it was a charity event that I was invited to. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I sang there, you know, literally for charity. He ended up being there, invited mm -hmm. as well. Um, mm -hmm. He was in the backstage. We took a picture and that was it. So you, you must know. have been pretty and People humble. were like, but any girl that kind of, that any girl that takes pictures with him is like, oh my gosh, like he's dating this and he's dating, like he's dating everyone, you know? So yeah. that was like, you know, some people are like, oh my gosh, like now, you know, what are you together? I'm like, are you guys crazy? Well, it's the thing like, was, takes tons of pictures with people. You yeah. Know? Well, I mean, the thing was, I understand, and I was going to ask you. You must have been a little bit humbled when he came up to you and asked you if you uh, would let him take a picture with you. Oh, I I asked him to obviously take a picture, but he no. came to me and he... <laughs> I told you it'd be funny. He came to me. He he came to me. What was awesome was that I he saw saw me singing. Um, I was what I was I was singing alone Barracuda actually I did like a rock set like ro rock set not rock set but he <sighs> came to the back stage just like wow like you have an incredible voice so that was amazing yeah that was really really cool you know I'm just like okay well that that's awesome and then I'm just like yeah can we take pictures you know like and yeah. we did and that was that was it did he have to step on a box because you guys look like you're about the same height <laughs> 
<laughs> um, I don't think so. Yeah, I think he was he was fine. He was fine as he was. Okay. Got a question about one of my favorite um, pilots, Iron Maiden, Bruce mm -hmm. Dickinson. Um, obviously, I've seen pictures. You're a great fan of uh, Bruce's. Oh, yes, absolutely. And then, you know, you've done a lot of songs of these male singers. This is where I'm going with this. Um, you, I don't think you're aware, but you should be trying to see about trademarks and cracking some royalties because I think you invented a joke that a lot of these male singers um, are involved in that you've um, sang their tunes. Uh, let's go with um, Axl Rose. Let's go with Sebastian Bach, Bruce Dickinson, et cetera, et cetera. Do you realize, and here's another thing, your voice is so unique. If you're listening close, you know it's you singing these songs. But you're also so tone friendly that you're hitting every octave and note in the song. So I'm going to say that you are part of the joke where a lot of these musicians get razzed and their buddies come up to them and say, hey, Seb, told you you sang like a girl. <laughs> well, you know, well, <laughs> I, you know, it, it, it's, it's, I just love male singers is the truth. I really, 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 I mean, there's incredible, great female rock singers. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I just always looked up to, to guys. I just feel like they're always kick our ass uh, as girls and um, and as long as they like it you know as long as they're like you know it's actually pretty good as long as they would like it I think that's you know it's, have you it's ever good. had any artists approach you that didn't like okay there, here's another couple of things I've been thinking of first of all when I listen to your music and songs and some of these covers and you do have your own songs I believe I heard one was it Believer it was just that was a couple it was still a couple of songs that I, I I've I've done. I have two solo albums that I've released, but they were yeah. in Czech. And I'm currently working actually with a producer in London that I found. Um his name is Julian Emery. He's just amazing. Julian and, Emery? Yeah. I don't know, I'm sorry. Julian I'm sure he's good. <laughs> he worked with loud. Work. We actually worked with Hailstorm Storm for a, oh. for a while. He helped, uh, you know, really cool British bands. So wow. he, I love him because um, because I have a vision in my head um, that is a little bit hard to describe. It's not like you come to the produ producer and say, "I want to sound exactly like Slayer, please." Can you make that happen? Or I would come and say like, hey, I want to sound exactly like like Hailstorm. You know, can you, that's not what I want to do. I, I do have a vision in my head about what is it that I want to do about the band, what it looks like, what it sounds like. And if you, you need to find someone that really can help you to bring all of this together. So mm -hmm. I love him because I come with, I want a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And then listen to the sound, listen to the, these, the sound of these drums. This is exactly what I want. But if you listen to this band, this is how I want the bass guitar sound. This is what I want it to look. And it's very hard. It's hard. Like if a producer does not have imagination, mm -hmm. it's very hard for you to create something unique and new. And I really think that if you want your band to be successful, you really have to bring something to the table that yeah. is distinguishable, different, um, unique. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you cannot be a, you can be a copycat, you know, in a way, but do it your own way, you know, bring something new to it. So right. it stands out. And so that's why I just love to work with him. Cause I spent four hours talking to him at some point, it was just like, Jesus, shut up. We're done. <laughs> like four hours of this. Like my head is going to explode. I need to like digest all of it. I'm like, you know, full of ideas. And and then we meet in a studio for four or five hours and I could hear the elements that I was talking about. So he's in, a good listener. Yeah. And and just, you know, you have to be a little bit of a visionary as, as a producer to right. like not be... Uh, not get lost in the process of creating and sound like something else. Right. Unless the artist wants to do that. It's totally yeah. fine. 
totally fine. Everyone's different. Everyone wants to create something different. I just, I just have a certain vision that I have in my head. And the hardest thing is to being able to translate it or, or, uh, you know, into someone else's head. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, but that's what it is. I, I love that's the process of creating. Perfect. Um, so what I was going to say was, um, in a lot of the lyrics, and I don't know if it's in every song, but I've I caught it a few times. When you're singing one of these songs that you're um, um, fond of, there's a couple of lyric changes in there. For instance, he to them or something very minute. Is that because of a royalty or an algorithm thing? For oh, it was actually, oh, you mean, maybe I probably was probably one of the Ronnie James Dio's. So. Um, no, I think even in um, yeah. Wasted Time. I, I don't know why. I'm just. Curious. It was out of this was out of respect, uh, for actually Ken Templin because he's a Christian. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's a okay. Christian. okay. And okay. so anything you know with the devil yeah, is yeah. Like, you. You know, it kind of like there's a probably like there's a little bit of a, I guess superstition that. Yeah. Uh, but anything related to to devil was like not about us. It was so there was like a little bit of change. So it was out of respect of of his beliefs that he just doesn't want to put that on his channel well, that's awesome it sounds like you're very um humble and you're very um i think you're very spiritual obviously i think that's a no I, I love spiritual stuff um yeah for sure it's like it's me and my grandmother in in our family that mm -hmm. we you know there, there's i believe that there is something beyond on beyond earth and there is. Um, i'm not i'm not a christian i'm not i don't i i don't belong into any specific you know b beliefs um but i believe that there's something beyond there's something us. divine we're not here by chance we didn't just i like i just you know i spent a little bit of time um watching youtubes you know people that died came back from Me the too. near death experiences i watched yeah, about a thousand like of those it's a people so you just go like you know you have to be open to to this stuff and and uh die. people that believe that they die and that's it that's my, my parents that's my grandparents you know and I, again like I, i'm respectful uh mm -hmm. when it comes to people's ideas and their their how they view things i've been always more on the spiritual side like i was just always like this cannot be it Come on, this just cannot be it. It's just not. Yeah, I mean, logically, <laughs> they say we use ten percent of our brains, but I don't know. Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind. There's something else. It's just there's too many questions, right? Just too many mysteries unanswered, and what do we know? You know. And then there's but... miracles that we see in life, right? Hundred percent, all the time, all the time. Before I forget, I was going to ask you. Has there been an artist or a label that has approached you after you've done one of their songs or do you have to ask permission in advance or I don't think you do really because I see I don't get I mean I don't get paid you no know, and if you're doing a cover like a guy does a cover of a song on YouTube of say um you know crazy train well he's only giving the Aussie corporation more yeah for the buck for free so yeah. have you ever Pretty been much. approached by somebody that didn't want you to do it after they saw it or they didn't like it no Fortunately not. <laughs> well, yeah, for sure. I mean, I can't see why. I mean, like, yeah. who is this tool? Anyways, no, don't, no I'm just joking. <laughs> um, before I let you go, Gabby, actually, before, I should have asked this earlier. What's the opposite of unsubscribe? Subscribe. Yeah, okay. do as Gabby, uh, Gabriella Gunsakova, Gabriella Gun says, and subscribe to the channel, because I believe you've seen... Uh, video of mine so uh they should yeah. subscribe correct absolutely you guys should subscribe 100 percent. and canadian wise because this is out of canada but i always obviously have american uh viewers and subscribers and and worldwide and actually speaking of worldwide uh, you're you're from czech you're from czech republic or slovakia i'm from czech republic yes okay yeah i was just wanting people are probably understanding what the language or English is excellent, but there are some subtleties that um, somebody would notice European. So yeah, you're born there. Um, you, you won or you came second in Eurovision. I saw that video when you did uh, hearts alone, which is great by the way. Um, so I sent you a clip of a Canadian singer icon in the hard rock industry. Did you happen to listen to that? I didn't have a chance to watch that. Unfortunately, oh yeah. Watch it. Busy. And our interview was like, let's, let's get it done. But I have to, yeah, I'm good. When I have a free time, I will. Have you heard of Lee Aaron? 
No. Okay, ask Ken. He he'll tell you. He's heard of Lee Aaron, the Metal Queen. Mm -hmm. um, she was an '80s hardcore rock singer star here in Canada. Made it big in Europe, but she's got pipes. I mean, she's got vocal range. Probably not near as yours, but she. I know. I know some one song. Yes. Metal Queen. Oh uh, no! It was the mannequins in the video. Um, what you do people, to my body? Something with people. Um, human touch. <laughs> No, yeah there was like mannequins and people dancing in the video gosh i i wish i would yeah i think that i i i do okay. know okay about. um any other canadian singer inspirations that you have or bands other than rush i love rush i love you guys i love alex i mean but every single time i ask this question it's, it's rush is rush there anybody is, i think that's i mean that it has no competition yeah rush it's just beyond it's incredible oh, yeah. you know I, I we i mean i go still back in the time and i i just keep discovering you know now you would call them you know legends like older bands it's just yeah. i yeah. With, with every year there's just so much more appreciation for this is true yeah that kind of music because i mean honestly like the modern music is there's no inspiration at times. It's very, very hard, I have to say. Yeah. Um, Who are you listening to these days, if I may ask? It's so funny. This year, I got into Rammstein. Oh, yeah. A lot. Uh, not necessarily, like, their biggest hits. Like, I'm not, like, do hust kind of girl. Yeah. Um, there are just other songs that I fell in love with. Um and it was because I was listening to an interview with Tobias Forge from Ghost. Yeah. And, um, he was just saying that he's just like, I'm, I just, I just, I just wish that Ghost would become one day uh, Rammstein. And I'm like, of course, I knew Rammstein for so many years. Um, but this year, I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to explore them a little bit more. I'm going to give it a, give it a chance and listen to some of their stuff and you know I, I love it i mean these guys are even in czech republic they do not play stadiums they play airport like oh, abundant all the open airport. field yeah it's open field seventy five thousand people and they play it twice a day what? No, not twice two days in a row sorry two days in yeah. a row it's day one and day two czech republic is just 10 million people so in two days you play like almost hundred and forty thousand people. I was like, what? What is? What is it about this band? What is it about this band? And I started to listen to it. I just you know would go over it. anytime I'm getting in the band. Like I just kind of I'm a little stalker. Like I just like literally watch almost everything that they've ever released. And and then I, I just got into them. Just like you know, like they're they're actually really really unique, really awesome. And so that's like one of the bands that I really got into this year for example like in industrial metal like never thought that's going to be my thing but there's a lot of inspiration that that you can find in in their not music but performance and my my band in my head that i'm creating right now it is definitely more on the theatrical side mm -hmm. rammstein is that for sure people don't come just for the music they they love the show yeah the whole just like a tso experience um, I'm getting on a screen here. Why am I doing this? Give me a second here. Oh man, <laughs> and there we go. So yeah, TSO experience, a Pink Floyd experience live, and it's it's Iron Maiden, you know. Oh, Iron the, Maiden, yeah. Both like they're they're just people want to be entertained. They want to see a show, and yeah. I I'm I'm the same. Like I just I just love that. Perfect. Okay, I'll, I'm going to let you go. You've been really excellent and gracious with your time, uh, Gabriella. Uh, where Thank can you. people find all of your um, your music and um, your your website? Uh, where would they go? I'm obviously going to put them in the links below, but just uh, give the viewers uh, a head start. Maybe like the main main thing that I because I I had a Facebook uh, years ago that had over hundred thirty thousand followers on it and. It was great to reach out to people. It was great to, you know, to show them what is it that I was up to. But unfortunately, it was hacked and just Facebook is not very willing to help me to get it back. So I lost it and I had to start it in, in Instagram 
profile like a year and a half ago um, and build it from scratch again. So Gabriella Gun official on Instagram with the blue mark. Um, that is like the official Instagram. So if you go there, you're going to get all the updates and everything about me. I'm in the charge of that account. So it's Perfect. really directly everything from me. And uh, that is right now like the 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 main source of 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 everything like any information about me perfect. so um yeah we're that's where you can find me perfect uh thanks so much and uh appreciate your time and thank thanks you for having, for, me. For having sorry? me sorry thank you for having me oh absolutely and thanks a lot to dino jalusic um uh, we had been corresponding <laughs> you and i but um after my interview with dino which i'm editing now uh, he said, yeah, I'm going to message Gabby. We're good buddies. And I'm like, okay, well, 50-50 if he does or not. And then not even 10 minutes later, I got that email from you saying, yeah, let's do this. So thanks, Dino. I appreciate it, bud. Well, I was about to email you back when I got a text from him. So, you know, so it was a sign for sure, you know, because I'm like literally like I need to answer to you back today. And then Dino was like, hey, I'm doing this interview. Like, come on, you know, like I'm just like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's fifty awesome. percent it's of his work. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks again, and um, hope to have you back on the show uh, in the future after the big news is out. When do when do you anticipate this big news? You said May, I think, right? I think it still might be this month. Still might be when? This month, March. Oh, March. Oh, wow. That's that's even sooner than May. Yeah, even Canada, the calendar works. So perfect. <laughs> All right. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for having me. It was fun. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm a definitely chatter. I can have conversations, you know, for hours and talk about everything. No, that's perfect. You've but, been, but what is like, but promoting myself? <laughs> no, you're 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 a very humble woman. You're very um, talented, and um, we look uh, forward to seeing more of you. And uh, once again, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you very much. Was you, Carmel, and say.